Can you, did you forget what she did to me last week? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that I was only the beginning. Oh, yeah, when I was true. fully awake. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of shocking, actually. That's normal. Yes, sure, normal. Let yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Sure, sure, sure. Let me do it. <laughs> 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 that then uh, you'll end up in jail then for yeah. that, yeah. Double standard. But in Vietnam we do it every time. Oh, say one lot. Say one lot. But in Vietnam we do it every time. You do it in the street in Vietnam? <laughs> no, no, tell us to say one lot one more time. Yeah, um, <laughs> it makes a difference. What? Sometimes. 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 Yeah. No, you don't know your mind. You no, only you like crime. Only to a friend, you brought me over. What if it leaks? Oh my god, this is awesome! Can you voice through that? Yeah, that's okay, if a guy does it. I don't think so. Girl, girl, this girl is okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, girl and girl, okay. <laughs> guy and girl, okay. But girl and guy are not okay. Guy and guy, come on. No, girl and guy is okay, but guy and girl is not okay. Uh, what about guy and guy? Guy and guy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only, the only person is guy and girl. Everything else is okay. Uh, but if they do it behind the tree, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fight to leave her alone. She's so young and innocent. Now, come on. Yeah, sure, innocent. <laughs> That's why she's laughing. <laughs> yeah, I know it was all the other Vietnamese students. Yeah, the, the, the Vietnamese boys. And tell them that uh, yeah, Paul told me it's fine to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, That's how they that. greet in Vietnam. So hey, so long, how are you today? You okay? <laughs> All right. So, as promised, I wanted to do the last topic on fields, which we missed because this morning, uh, when I said, "So we're finished fields," and you all said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah," we weren't. So, can you write this down? Last topic in fields <coughs> is Kepler's laws. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you have a mute button? Uh, yeah. Sun don't shine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Kepler's law. You have this? No. No? <laughs> this class. This class. It's the best class you've ever taught. It's a class of dysfunctional... <laughs> <laughs> now hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Intellectual <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on now, be fair, now, be fair. All right, Kepler's law. Okay, so Lee, are you touching Omar's face? <laughs> the Chinese way of saying hello is it? It's like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, they have dating. If a girl does this to you, do it one more time, I swear. Next time, be your head. All right, hang on. New class rule: no touching other people in class without their permission. <laughs> Seems fair. Yeah. Seems fair. Can I touch you? <laughs> yes, on my shoulder. <laughs> oh my goodness! This dysfunctional. Right. So, as I was saying, Kepler, uh, like Newton, has three laws. I don't know if you've studied them before. Does anyone know Kepler's three laws? Or have you seen, <coughs> and you know, have you seen them before? Kepler's three laws? I don't remember them. Do you remember anything of any of the three? I remember it's a Kepler one there, correct? No, because I just told you that. <laughs> so, no. Anyone else? No? Okay, so Kepler's first law. So Kepler's three laws have to do with the motion of planets and Kepler's first law says that bodies in orbit of the Sun or other masses move in either a circular path or does anyone know? You have two choices here. Oh, no, you have the right idea okay, but, but not the right I adjective. Yeah. No, no. No. What's the first letter? E. E. Uh, in elliptical. 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 Very good. So that means uh, that they'll orbit them either in a circle, which we know what a circle looks like, or an ellipse, and this is an ellipse shape. And this is Kepler's first law. Uh, Maybe. 
maybe. I don't know what you're saying. We'll see. Now, as a matter of interest, this law is a result of Newton's law F equals G M1 M2 R squared. However, um, you should note that Kepler existed long before Newton did. <coughs> so, Kepler was studying planetary motions before it was understood uh, how their motions what behave. Oh, I think Newton was late 1600s and Kepler was early 1600s. 1600s? 1600? Mm. Newton, since back then? Mm. Um, Respect. And Einstein. Even oh, he's like 1900. Stuff. Kepler did it by looking through lots and lots of data that was collected on planetary motion and observation. So, you know, this would have been a Didn't huge undertaking. Not in 1600s, no. Um, well, some, well, even now some people do. Yes, that's true. Uh, okay, so this is Kepler's first law. <laughs> no, he's right. Some people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat Earthers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, isn't like Kanye West or something one of them as well? Isn't it? Is it? So if you run really fast and then jump on the beach in Ireland, you'll fall off the planet and start swimming in space? Clearly, Ireland's not on the edge of the planet. Yeah, Clearly, it's uh, the center of the planet. Yeah. Uh, Clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the edge of it? Of Egypt or something, I suppose, some place like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, at least Egypt is still on the planet. Hasn't fallen off the edge. Cradle of civilization. Okay. Case done. Yeah. All right. So now, Kepler's second law. Do you come from the Viking? <laughs> yeah. Do you take people's land? Um. <laughs> Women and children too. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> Kepler's second law now. So Kepler's second law says that the periodic time squared is proportional to the average radius of the orbit cubed. Or as a formula, time squared is proportional to r cubed. And as a direct formula, it's this. Without the proportional in it. What is the team? the periodic time. Now, this is the final proof that you may need for the exam. It's the proof of this formula, which I'm going to do now. The G, this is the same G from the last Yes, time. so obviously in the time of Kepler, he would have only had this formula, t squared is proportional to r cubed. But we are able to come up with this exact formula by using Newton's gravitational law as well. R is the radius of the circle, of the orbit. Yes, the orbital radius, yeah. Okay, then if it's not a circle, if it was an elliptical path. Read, read what I have highlighted. The average, okay. What's the m? Mass of the body. That's uh, yeah. Actually, which one? Uh, I should the say center. the center. Okay. Can we do the proof now? This counts the circular motion. Yeah. So my pen is in orbit. Yeah. Okay. In planets, the speed is constant, right? Yes. What happens if we increase the speed? We then it'll move. Radius? Yeah, it'll move to a higher orbit. Okay, so this and this. But okay. it's not quite circle. It's a circular path, but it's not circular motion that we've done in the past because there's no force directed towards the center. Okay. Continue. Can I do now? I'll say this one more time before I do it. This proof <coughs> is on the exam. And of all the proofs, um, I'd say this is the most common proof. There's three proofs on the exam. The first proof, in terms of how common it is, is this proof. This is definitely the most common proof. And it's in both section A and B. The second most common proof is the one that um, 
where you have to take the log of both sides to simplify or arrive at an expression with exponentials. So do you remember how you have the exponential formula, for example, i equals i0 e minus t over tau, or whatever, or what, what's the one we did today, a equals a0 e minus lambda t, or you had i equals i0 e minus t over tau. Taking these and using a log to change them into the form of y equals mx plus c, that's, we've done a couple of times in class, that's the second most common proof in the exam. The third proof, which is on the syllabus, but in fact has not been asked in the exam yet, is the proof of the UVATS formulas. I don't expect them to ask that. Um, but this one is common. So, let's have a look at this. <coughs> so here's the idea. We have mass m, mass m, and it's in orbit. So Newton said f equals g m m over r squared. But this is a circular motion. So we can also say f equals m omega squared r. If I put these together, I get g m m over r squared equals m omega squared r. Cancel the m's. And what I'll do is I'll bring the OR down. So now I end up with this. Yeah. Okay, next I'll square root. So now I end up with this. 2 pi over t equals root gm over OR cubed. Now actually, what am I trying to get to? Maybe, no, I actually wanted the t square, so I could have just left it with the square t over 2 pi squared equals g m over 4 cubed. So that means t squared equals 4 pi squared g m over r cubed. What's gone wrong? What has gone wrong? Omega is 2 pi over t. Oh, I really need that Panadol. Give me that good Vietnamese medicine. Uh, omega is 2 pi over t. I'm so sorry squared equals g m over r cubed. I'm okay for a minute. Uh, so that means t squared equals 4 pi squared r cubed oh, over g m. Yeah, I have to cross multiply at the end. So it's not a very long proof, um, but it's a very useful result. And this is called Kepler's second law. Which one? The result, the equation. Oh. Okay. So the first is a statement and then the second is the equation. Yeah. Well, in Kepler's time it would have been a statement t squared proportional to r cubed. You've got to remember in the time of Newton and Kepler they did not have any math symbols so all of this would be written down in English. Nice! So this formula wouldn't English be... English back then would have been really nicer. Yes, so this would have been written down as t squared is equal to the product of 4 pi squared by r cubed all divided by g times m. Just be thankful you don't have to do maths like that. It would be. No wonder they were on thoughts. And again, I'll say it one more time, and then probably a few more times after I said I'll say it one more time. This proof is on the exam in both section A and B. It's pretty common proof. And not only is it a common proof, some of the questions don't ask you to prove it, but you require this formula to do it. And it's not in the formula book. This is not in the formula book. This is not in the formula book. Not in the formula book. Wait, is this not in the formula book? No, it's not. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. So it's good to know how to prove it. Okay, continue. Make a
Arnie, let's. Yes, indeed. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, these are in the book, I believe, but this one is not, and this is what you're proving. Green tea is not nice. Green tea? Don't like it so much. Continue. Right, so Kepler has one law left. So we've talked about the shape of the orbit and the time. Now, Lee, you were going on about something. Do you think you know what the third law is? Hmm? Something to do with distance, yeah. yeah. And something to do with radius, yeah. And speed. And correct. So... And the acceleration. No, no, it's the, 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 the speed is constant at the constant radius. When you change the radius, you change the speed. Now you, <laughs> dear Stephen, <laughs> make it an old. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, Feistel is right, despite being ridiculous. The speed does change at a different radius, but what is the relationship between the speed and the radius? You leave, you increase the radius, you decrease the, the... No, you increase the speed. No, you decrease, decrease, the, decrease speed. the speed. You increase the radius and the result is to... Decrease, decrease. the speed. But what is that as a formula? Uh, something? Yeah. Inversely proportional. But let's have a look at it precisely. Now, there, Kepler would have expressed it a different way. Oh look, yeah. this proof is on the exam, and as <laughs> such, it's not in the formula book. Kepler's third law says that the area swept out by an orbiting body per unit time is constant. What does that mean? Before you write that down, let me just explain. Please. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So, here is a picture of the uh, Earth traveling around the sun. And each picture is one month of time that has passed. So this is January, February, March, whatever. What Kepler noticed is that the area here in each piece is the same. Even though the radius is different. So if this radius is smaller, then it must be that this piece here is bigger, the area stays the same. And it doesn't matter if you use days, months or years, well, years would be kind of stupid, uh, days or months or weeks, no matter what, Kepler note is that per unit time, the area you get uh, stays the same. So if the planet gets very close to the sun, it must be moving very fast to make a bigger area. So it can be the same as the area earlier. As a formula, you could say that, there's a couple of ways to say it, but one simple way to say it is that V1 or 1 equals V2 or 2. That when you multiply the velocity and the radius, it's a constant then. Yes, this is what we all talk about deep down, right? This is Kepler's third law. I like all scientists more than I like modern ones. The old ones have sort of charm about them. No, because like nowadays, everything's already provided. And they don't even have to do anything or think about it. It's just computerized everything. Like, the, okay, they have... They get more accurate than... Yeah, no, because they have all the computerized things. Don't but forget, like I know, not, not only computerized things, but they have cheap, cheap undergrads and postgrads that can do work for them too. You think Newton had any postgrads working for him? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Kepler's third law. Why is it that the radius decreases? Yeah, it's like, why would it not be a circle to begin with? Yeah. So, according to Kepler's first law and Newton's law, the motion doesn't have to be a circle. It could be an ellipse. And an ellipse means like a stretch circle. Now, why it can be a circle or an ellipse is because when you look at Newton's law of gravity and you try to solve it, 
something which is too difficult for us to do, the equation that comes out says that the shape of the path could be a circle or an ellipse. So the real question is, like, how does it become a circle or an ellipse? And I don't know, that's just a random thing about how the planets were set up, you know. Um, why does it get closer? Because on an ellipse, it gets squished at the ends, so that's why it's getting closer. Do you know what I mean? Or like, if you picture the ellipse like this, and the sun is here, then as the Earth gets to the left side of the ellipse, it's obviously closer. Then, it's I think the third law is acceleration cube over uh, radian squared is always equal. Okay, perhaps because I'm leave I said this can be stated in a few ways. So the way we say it in class is this way, but the way you say it, it could be what you did in China as well. Yeah, um, this is what we need. The simple one here. Yeah. Do you remember your one? Yeah. What is it? Acceleration cube over radian squared. Constant. So your one would be a1 cubed over r1 cubed equals a2 cubed over r2 cubed. Squared. Oh, uh, sorry, squared. Squared. Yeah, that's what you did. Yeah. Could be. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Did you write this one down? Yeah. And there's a nice little picture. The areas are the sh same regardless same area if it's the same time. And huh? Oh, it doesn't matter about the amount of units. You could do days and then it'd be 365 parts. Um, I used to do the proof, but the proof isn't on the syllabus, so there's no point in doing it. Now, does anyone know this term? Geostationary or parking orbit? Right, actually, this came up in a coursework of some kind, didn't it? The orbit uh, stays at a constant radius. No. Does anyone remember these terms from coursework one? No. Speed. No speed. Is that a sentence? That's a movie. Anyone? Oh, dudes. Okay. A geostationary or parking orbit is an orbit in which the periodic time is one day. Because what would happen is, if this is the Earth, and this is the satellite, if this takes one day to turn, and the Earth takes one day to turn as well, then it looks like the satellite is always in the same place above the Earth. Why we call it a parking orbit. Is that moon Huh? Is that moon no. Because the moon moves throughout the sky. You can see the moon rise and the moon sets. But for a parking orbit, every time you look at it, it's in the same place in the sky. This is important for... GPS. Yeah, I was thinking satellites. Satellites, GPS. GPS especially. Okay, you have that? Yep. Right. The result of such an orbit is to make the satellite appear fixed in the sky. Why we call it a parking orbit. So the moon does not have a parking orbit? No, because the moon moves throughout the sky. Like, if you took a picture of the moon uh, on your camera, like had that set on a tripod, and then come back one hour later and take a picture again, or even have a time sequence on it, yeah, yeah. you can see it moving yeah. through the sky like the sun does. But that's 
comparing to our Earth. Correct. Like and the moon is in orbit to our Earth. Just like yeah, a satellite. No, but like if we're on a different planet, let's say Mars. Yeah. And then the time Mars takes to orbit the Sun yeah. is two days. The time Mars takes to orbit the Sun or to have a day? To have a day. Yeah, it's two days. It's two okay. days. So the periodic time of a moon for a Mars will have to be two days. Yeah, one. correct, yeah. Yeah. So it's not one day, that's it. So it, it is one day. It has to be synchronized with the same planet yeah. and everything. But a day is defined for the planet. Ah. You know? Okay, so for a complete rotation. Yeah, which is what a day is. I, oh, di- I didn't okay. say one Earth day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said one day. Yeah, okay. Right. For Faisal, for Earth, of course, T equals 24 hours. For Mars and other planets, it will be different. Right, here's a small question for us to try now. A small satellite is in a parking orbit around Earth. How far is it from the surface of the Earth? Note the range the Earth is stopped and the mass of the Earth is stopped. Um, you have a couple of choices here, but let's think about this. Could you use Kepler's second law? So if you look at Kepler's second law, uh, what does Kepler tell you? Kepler gives you a relationship between the time, the mass, and the radius. So what do we have here? A small satellite is in orbit around the Earth. How far is it from the surface of the Earth? So that's the OR. And I give you uh, the mass of the Earth. And I also give you the time. Yeah. Uh, 24 hours. So it would be easiest to use Kepler's second law here. You could get the OR. The R is the radius plus X. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you a minute to try this one. Then I'll do it. And see what you can come up with. So you want the X? Correct. G is 6.88 or 8? 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. This G. Correct. Calculator time. Okay guys, so we're doing it together. Using Kepler's law we can rearrange it to this. Radius is r cubed gm t squared over 4 pi squared, which is r uh, cube root 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And what was the mass of Earth please? Uh, mass of the Sun? No. Mass of the Earth? 
5.47. Yeah. Times 10 to the 10 to 10. Okay, and the time <coughs> is 24 times 3,600 all over 4 pi squared. Do you have an or here? Does anyone have this? Three point one four one. Yeah. Radius. Three point one four one meters, huh? It's a pretty small earth. No, the pi I mean. Pi is three point one four one. Three point one four one five nine two six five four. Oh, this is a gigantic number. What? Before the radius. What do you have, Andrew? Come on, what's the problem? 88 million meters, yeah, that could be it, because 42 or 88 million. Can I see what you're typing in? Seems legit. Wait, you missed a zero, it's 3600. You wrote 360. They're right, 42. Uh, what's that in kilometers? Wait, that's. Uh, big, okay. Shockingly big. Uh, 400. Is that right? No. Uh, Hang on. 6.67 from 10 to minus 11. 5.4. What did you get there, uh, you said? 4, 3, 2, 6, 9, Not this. Wait, wait, give me did you, are you doing it this way? Yeah. Is the math 10 to 27? Yes. Is that not the math of the Earth? No. It's no. not. Oh, it's not. 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Where did you get this 27 from? Wait, are you thinking of like protons? No. Where can you go back? Sorry, I'm hogging your calculator here. What? Could it be? Could be. For roughly four one oh eight oh kilometers? No. 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 Alright, I give up. I'm too tired. Just give me a there, you should oh thank you. Four two two three six kilometers. That's not finished though, why not? You have to take away the radius of the earth because I only asked for the height. So what did I say the range of the earth was? Uh, 6371. Uh, 35865 35, kilometers is the answer then. Yeah, okay, continue. <laughs> Right, we can do this one um, pretty quick actually. The planet Mars is about 228 million kilometers from the Sun. One Mars year is actually 687 Earth days. Using this information, what is the mass of the Sun? So think about what you have. What is the 228 million kilometers in Kepler's formula? The R. And what's the 687 days? Time. The time. So you can get the mass. Okay, try that. But <coughs> isn't the T for a day? No, it can be any periodic time to orbit. You have a headache too? No, I'm thinking, why did we use then a day for the last question? 
just because I use the term park in orbit. Okay. Okay. Someone else is the same term. Park periodic time or parking orbit is the time taken for an object to orbit a day for the around the uh, <laughs> look look Earth has the Earth uh -huh. one day uh -huh. equals twenty four hours. Uh -huh. So if an object orbits in twenty four hours, hours Second. Yeah. So it's a ten minutes. Uh, yeah. Second. Ten minutes is only one. And meters. Yeah, meters are number. Second. We did we did convert the twenty-four. Meter has been multiplied by two thousand for time. Oh. Okay. In the final exam, I tell you how much time is left in seconds. True. True story. So I'll say there's no, I'll say there's one thousand eight hundred seconds left. Really? Hmm? Why? Who cares? It's, it's very boring sitting there watching you do an exam for two and something hours, so ninety one seconds. Ninety seconds. Oh. No, I do it per thousand, so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kinda like that. Then I, with your name. <laughs> then I have to answer stupid questions like, oh, I, I don't have enough space. Can I go on to the next page with this question? I'm like, yeah, of course. Is it okay if I use blue pen and red pen? I'm like, yes. Yes. No, sir. not allowed. me. It's either black or blue. Can use red. No. But I don't care, I can use pencil, crayon, paint or blood, I don't care. Once I can read it. Oh my. The old white ink on white paper trick, ah. Yeah. Alright, do we have an M yet? Yes. What you got? 38,200. That sounds pretty small for the sun, when you think about it, in kilograms. Like, that's like a Dublin bus or something, isn't it? <laughs> Even that sounds a bit small. Ten to the twelve, you know. That's like how big was the Earth? Ten to the twenty-four. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The sun's bigger than the Earth. Oh dang. Double check your calculations, sir. Oh. oh, ten to the six. I don't know. Ten to the twenty-one. So. Let's have a look here. Yeah, 1.9 times 10 to the 21. 1.9, yeah. 10, 10 to the power 30. You just looked that up on your phone. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, I know, because we both have the same page open. I can see the same picture. Yeah, guys, you need to get the power 30. Did you get it yet? No. Okay. Two times ten to the twenty-one. Right, I'll do it now. Yeah, that's to be good. Five so. I can't do it. I can't do it. Too big now. Too big. Right, look. If we take Mr. Kepler's formula and rearrange that, we get m equals um, four pi squared or cubed over g. T squared, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, so that will equal four times three point one four one five squared times two two eight million kilometers Nine, uh, cubed over six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven. Oh, oh, rumba times T squared. Which is six eight seven times twenty four times three thousand six hundred. Okay, now hit that in. Tell me what, what you get. Did you? What's in front? One point nine eight nine That sounds too accurate. That's the exact answer. Did you really get it? Okay. Cool for you. Yeah. What's that ten to the three four? Because it's kilometers. So we want to send meters. Yeah. 
Why did... What? What? Oh my goodness, that's wrong. It's sick. What? Where's your 10 to the minus 11? Where's this part? That's the G. Yeah, where's your G? Where? In the end. In the end? Give me. Yes. <laughs> we have a G constant. Nice. Uh, for long, it's T squared. Right, what is the average velocity of Mars? Did you just go back? Okay. Guys, can we continue? Okay. Next, maybe you can give me an idea. How can I get the speed of Mars? Is it the MWR? Yeah, yeah, it's a circular motion formula. So you replace the omega with the velocity over the Well, V equals, does anyone remember from circular motion? Omega over C. No. Uh, 2 pi omega. Uh, this one, yeah, you okay, might yeah. Or you might remember, yeah, omega equals VR. V equals omega R. This is the formula in circular motion. But what's the formula for omega? Yeah. Now, do we know the R? Yes. Do we know the T? Yeah. So it's 2 pi over, what's the time here? 687 times 24 times 3600, and the radius is 228 times 10 to the 9. Okay, what's this, please? So, divide by 1,000, and you get how many kilometers per second? 24 kilometers. 24 kilometers per second. Pretty fast. Yeah? Continue? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the speed of one. Yep, that's how fast it's moving through space. 34 kilometers per second. The orbit of Mars is not circular, it is elliptical. At its nearest distance, it's 207 million kilometers away. What is its speed at this point? So, would it be going faster or slower at this point? Faster. Faster. So, you have the formula V1 R1 equals V2 R2. So, V1 is 24,000. R1 is 228 million, isn't that what we said? That's equal to V2 times 220, no, 207 million. Cancel, cancel. So V2 is 228 over 207 times 24 kilometers per second. So what's that, please? Two six five. So it's going faster. What do you think the effect is on the weather system when the Earth is nearest to the sun? That is incorrect. Again, again. What is the effect on the weather when the Earth is nearest to the sun? It has no effect because summer and winter, it's both summer and winter for the top and bottom half. Think about it. If it's supposed to be summer when it's closest to the sun, then it should be summer for everybody, not just the northern hemisphere. Yeah, if it's winter, the yeah, it's the yeah, opposite. Yeah, but uh, uh, what's it called? The orbit of the of the Earth around the sun yeah. is not a circle, it's elliptical, right? Correct. So, in the summer months, we are in the closer no. part of... 
Let's imagine we were in Australia. Yeah, it would be the other way around. It would be winter when? Yeah. No, no. Do you understand? Like, it's nothing to do with the distance. No, I, I refuse to accept this. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you do. Put the fire right here and then get closer to it. And then go back. You will not feel the difference? So here's the sun. Here's the earth. When it's here, <laughs> when it's here, you're saying it's summer because it's the closest. No, not summer. It's hotter. It's not summer. Well, I don't that? care if it's summer or not. It's hotter. Okay. You can't tell me. I'm I want to know what was the effect on the weather. It would be warmer. It's warmer in winter? Because if you were in Australia, this could be winter for you. The winter is not as cold as the winter over here. Don't tell me I'm wrong. You are wrong. No, I'm not. You're totally wrong. No, I'm not. Dude, you're totally wrong. Give, give, give me you light. Light, light. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not about the summer. I'm telling you. It's not summer, winter, or those. It will be warmer. The earth will be warmer when it's closer to the sun. No. Because, and you want to know the because? Why? Do you want, you want to have a guess? Why? Does anyone know? What's the question? Yeah, well, f okay. We all agree that it's not summer just because it's closest to the sun. I guess we don't all agree. No, because when it's summer here, it's winter in Australia. So it can't be winter for them if it's summer because they're closest. Because they're also closest at the same time. Well, yes, but you're not letting me finish. Okay? So the distance does not affect the temperature because, and this is the key difference, it would affect it for every other planet Mercury, Venus, Earth, or well, not, sorry, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. It doesn't affect Earth because Earth has life on it. And this is a key difference. So what's really interesting about Earth is that as the Earth gets closer to the Sun, the ecosystem adjusts and the net result is there's no temperature change which is quite amazing and um, this is one of these things where it only happens because there is life and how it happens is quite complicated but the system is able to adjust so that it can give off extra heat a bit like a person nearly they maintain the temperature yeah so the temperature on earth is actually constant year round it's just some parts are hot and some parts are cold but as an average it doesn't change that much. And even though the amount of energy coming out of the sun has changed by about 10% over the years, you would think that means that this would change by 10%? Global warming. No, it remains quite constant. It only changes slightly. Global warming is a myth now? No, 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 no. What my point is, what my point is, this has very little effect on changing the temperature. Yeah, which it doesn't. What? Uh, the atmosphere is quite powerful on the Earth at regulating the temperature until we screw it up and disturb the balance of what's in the atmosphere. Yes? Yes? I want the country that doesn't have sun. What? The country that what? The country that doesn't have sun. These are on the equator. The country that doesn't have summer or winter. Yeah. They're near the. Yeah, so what, what's happening is the reason there's summer and winter is because the earth is spinning. So during the summer months, more of it points towards the sun and further away from it. So this is in light longer and this is in darkness longer. No, that's the day. Yeah, which is the same no, thing no, as like the. But like the countries with no seasons are. are yeah, because, the because they're in the middle, because when the yeah. earth tilts, it has less effect because it's still facing the same way. Yeah. But if you're up the top and you're tilting backwards from the sun, that's kind of a problem. Yeah. And if you really want to know, I'll give you a very, very simple example of how the Earth can regulate its temperature, because it's, it's quite interesting. Um, imagine you have uh, a white plant, and this white plant, um, I don't know, um, we're just, uh, it's a white plant, and when light hits a white plant, uh, what happens? Uh, it reflects all the... It reflects the heat off of it. The leaves change color and they drop more. Wow! <laughs> Happy now? Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. I thought it was worth it. Yeah. Right. Nice. See, and you doubted me. You doubted me. Always. 
Tamam mı? Bir yolun çıkarırdı, sonra bir saltı mı olsun? Bir nasıl mı olsun? Eee, ne kadar falan. I'm not 100% sure, but it's gonna have to be somewhere in the red and orange because that's the color it looks like. Green and uh, I don't understand. Oh no, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is green actually. Yes. It's green and um, it's trans green. And it's weird, like in terms of plants, because plants were green. Yes. Yes. Green. The biology teacher. I was talking to the biology teacher about that. I because I remember asking him why. If there's so much green light, are yeah. plants green? Yeah, exactly. You and should absorb Exactly. Green. And he gave me a reason, and I don't remember because I thought that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> or, no, sorry, not that it was stupid. I didn't understand it. Because he's like, oh, well, this evolution, this, and this, this. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, it's not. I don't think it's fair. Because you would think plants would take advantage of the green light by absorbing not being absorbing. green. Yeah. They look black or something. Yeah. Something like that. There was this, uh, a color they made. Absorbs 99.9. Oh, I saw this. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. You all the saw this. It is amazing. The little laser on it. Laser goes over it and <laughs> gone. Uh, it's made from carbon. Yeah. yeah. It's made of carbon nanotubes. It is amazing. It is. What it is. is it it's just called nanocarbon. No, the color yeah. is amazing. Oh, the color has a name? Yeah, the yeah. Super Dark Ultimate Black? <laughs> <laughs> it has, it has, they made a name here. Now, can you just try this question for a few minutes before we continue? But just before I try it, I want you to point, I want you to realize something really, really important about Kepler's second law. Why so? Something really interesting about Kepler's second law, okay? So let's say uh, I'm looking through my telescope and I see uh, a new planet off in the distance and I want to know what is the mass of that planet okay, I want to know the mass of the planet and I notice as I'm looking at the planet I see a moon in orbit around it and I look at the moon and I'm able to tell the time it is for the moon to orbit I can tell that from looking, right? so I know the T also by using a little bit of trigonometry I can know the OR the distance between the moon and the planet so I can know the T and the R. Now what does Kepler tell me I can now know? The mass. the mass of the planet. Now think about that. You are able to know the mass of something by only looking at it. Looking at it, you can know the mass. This is quite amazing. Because I mean, if you think about it, how can they know what the mass of the Sun or Mars or any planet is? You can know it if you can see something orbiting it. Then you can use Kepler's second law. So you can know the mass by looking. That's only works for big mass. Huh? Or no, it works for anything. Are you in particular mass? Me? No, I think that was a more than that now. No, no, actually, I'm around about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what it is in newtons, actually. In about, about a kilo newton. So <laughs> if you work it backwards. <laughs> Sorry, I measure my weight in newtons, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> It's called Vanta Blast. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's uh, called an tube array. Yeah. And it practically absorbs all the light that lands on it. Yeah. But the reason they're making this is because the material, it's not because they want to make a super black material, it's because the nanocarbon is extremely strong material. The nanotechnology is amazing. It is. It absorbs radiation in the visible spectrum. That yep. does not mean it absorbs radiation. Yeah. Gamma rays. Gamma are not visible, so it doesn't absorb. Yeah. Mm. Okay, can you try this for a few minutes then and we'll go back to the. Wow, what happened to NASA? Look, I tried to make it cool. Just leave me alone, okay? <laughs> I, know, I know nobody here is able to help NASA out, okay? But we can make believe, alright? Oh, I can be the monkey and send it to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a drink and then I'll come back and we'll do the uh, second half of the lesson we started earlier. See how many of these you can do. I should point out that this <coughs> would be a section B question, obviously, but this is typical of the exam, except for the half and half the part out. They wouldn't say that. <laughs> Can you try this? Mm -hmm. I can try it. 
In formula, which radius do we use? The one from the, the moon to Mars or the radius of Mars? There's only one R. Yeah, but from an observatory on Earth, Mars. Not gmail.com, yeah? Uh-huh. Can you see letters at dicdublin.ie?
Yeah. A woman needs a man like a vision of the bicycle, that's the cause of the... What's orbiting? The... Phobos. Phobos is... Could you give me four? Could you call? Like talking to someone right now. 